Well, it seems that CBS has initiated their agenda for affirmative action casting by making 50% of the cast POC, as they like to say. And my simple reaction to it right now, initially looking at it, is why are there just mainly black people at it right alongside so-called uh, white people? I mean, people do know there's a lot more races of people. It's not just black and white. But in some people's uh, brains, that's all they see, black and white. I mean, there's various other groups. And yes, there's some represented. You know, we have Derek X, I think. <laughs> that's how you say his name. And he, uh, he's Asian. Uh, I believe you, you have a Latina. But, you know, there's a lot other uh, races of people. And if you truly wanted to adhere to uh, the percentages that's equivalent of what exists in society, then so-called black people are I mean, majority of the Big Brother fans online, on Twitter, you know, are woke libtards and all they do is complain the entire season please believe please believe if Xavier doesn't work with Tiffany or especially no especially if Xavier or Derek or Kylan if they don't work with Azar because she's a dark skinned black woman if they don't if they choose not to work with her and choose Elisa, who's the most attractive person in this cast right now, you know, again, you see going after David in and outside of the house. He was a so-called black guy, and he was trying to work with her ass the entire time. But the only racial slurs that got said in the house was by a so-called dark-skinned black woman towards a black man. And the libtard, the woke, the tolerant, the BLMers, the proud flaggers, they were all participating in the insult campaign towards David, calling him things like coon and sellout, even though you had some of those same people who were seeing him on the feeds, messing up his game, trying to work with the strong black women. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to this <laughs> kind of you know it, it <coughs> excuse me this had annoyed me in the first place um, initially but I just want the woke fan base on Twitter to be further exposed because Elisa is very attractive she's going to get males that want to align with her Whitney as well if she has a decent personality the guys are going to be are going to want to work with her as well and I can see Hannah perhaps being friends with Whitney or Elisa <laughs> so if these dudes especially along with Hannah don't work with Azai prepare yourself for the most racist nonsense on Big Brother Twitter and it's going to be from the same people who claim that they're tolerant, they claim that they're anti-racist, <clears throat> but the liberal mainstream have put it in a lot of so-called black people's minds that they can't be racist because they're black or because of uh, the history that they like to claim. So that's why you get some of the most disgusting, uh, aggressive, bigoted behavior from people like that now we have the body positivity cast it seems like on the show with uh, Brittany you know who has a nice little smile but you know she's a little plump there and Sarah looks a little 
you know, decently plump, but not too much. Now, the potential <laughs> super targets going into this will probably be Travis, will probably be Brent, because the alternative, you know, if the three black guys actually work with Azar and Tiffany, the alternative is that we'll have a race-based alliance. You know, something that was getting made between Davon and Bailey. Because, you know, that isn't problematic at all. A black power alliance, but a, you know, say, white power alliance or something like that, then it's an issue. Again, this actually makes sense and isn't deemed problematic in the brains of a liptard. To say, you, you can say blank power anything just as long it's not white or just as long as it's not man power. Girl power, black power, or POC power, cool. White power, man power, bad. Again, this logic computes in their head. Alright. Oh, it, it's, I think the Asian guy name is Derek. So it's Derek X and... Derek F. So, you know, we have two Derek's in the house. So maybe the Derek's will align. <laughs> now, I can see Christian, he won't get charged. I, I can see if he has a good attitude, good behavior, I don't see him getting targeted. Because Christian looks like, you know, uh, he, he marches <laughs> alongside BLM. You know, he, he placates the uh, inferiority complex written uh, black members of the Black Lives Matter movement. And, you know, he has the big curly hair. So I can see, I can see them not targeting him, you know, initially. You know, he'll he'll be a white ally. And again, I'm talking all, talking these alliances and moves race based because high chance they will be race based because this again, what the fan base on Twitter. This is what they asked for. You know, they want Big Brother 23 to be Big Brother 23 race wars. This is what they asked for. And I hope they get it. Truly. Now, we have a Baldy in Christie. You know, the first of her kind. Um, But, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention Frenchie. You know, with the hat and the, you know, Button up shirt, yeah, I can see him probably being the first one evicted. Because yeah, they'll assume he's a Trump supporter and MAGA, and, you know, and that's the worst thing in the world uh, to these people. Because they can be as racist as they want to be, prejudiced and bigoted as they want to be. But as long as they can call you a Trumpy, then they can be as evil and foul mouthed as they can imagine. But again, this is the logic. Of the Liptards online, and they had one of them representing them in the house with a person like Davon. Davon, I might add, is a dark-skinned black woman, as they like to cast themselves as, who began this whole journey in 17, Big Brother 17, season 17. She was evicted second, second, and yet she got to come back to Big Brother. In 18 and in 22. Then she got some, you know, small parts in soap operas. And then she got multiple opportunities in MTV, The Challenge. And based on porn rumors, I haven't really looked that up. Devon is supposed to have replaced Jeff in the role of interviewing people. So this oppressed black woman who also got rewarded $25,000 who called David a coon but she's still so oppressed getting all these opportunities <laughs> yeah that doesn't sound like an oppressed person to me but again by libtard logic a uh, logic yes she, she's still somehow oppressed but again mark my words if the black guys in this house, if Kylan, Xavier, and Derek don't work with Azai, 
and Tiffany because I can see Tiffany possibly being annoying who knows <laughs> but if they don't work with her watch all of the racial slurs and insults come from the same so-called uh, black people because again that's happening that's happened in pre prior seasons with David it's so it also sort of happened with Justin in um, Big Brother over the top where he chose to work with Whitney from his cast a southern white woman from Kentucky he chose to work with her instead of uh, Danielle you know who had a white guy showman to chain and they were calling him a bunch of names un under the sun and it was mostly coming and it mostly came from those uh, so-called black women I mean those probably some of the most racist people on Big Brother Twitter these uh, black liberal people <laughs> I mean these black liberal females and then they're followed by the white liberals who feel comfortable enough to let out uh, various slurs and insults even towards the black house guests that they that they see all of the uh, black liberal females go after because again the fan base for this show especially the ones who watch the feeds it's mostly female and all of the male fans like 99% of them are homosexual <laughs> so you have a bunch of homosexual and female based fan base somehow feeling oppressed online when <laughs> that's pretty much all who watches and covers this show like, I, I'm a rare breed who watch the feeds and react to them you know every other voice will sound a little bit more sensitive and femme than this but yeah uh, and for those who don't know what this show is I'm putting it at the back end I should have put this at the front end this show is basically a social experiment it puts 12 to 16 people in a house they compete like human chess socially strategically and physically through competitions but it's not really a physical game outside of a handful of competitions it's mostly like carnival games but what makes this game fascinating is that you are playing a social game so every single second that you're in the house or even when they see each other in like sequester before they enter the house but every single second you're playing the game you know you're going up to get something to eat you're going to the bathroom you're sitting on the couch you're having a conversation every aspect of your living in that house is a part of the game because when someone's looking for someone and you're in the bathroom instead of in the kitchen a part of this conversation whether it be negative or bad you know that's a marker in someone's brain whether they can trust that person or whether they are part of something or not and I can be negative or positively so I just love that aspect you know other people are in interested in the drama I don't care about that they have shows like love and hip-hop uh, housewives and bad girls clubs for people who enjoy all of that nonsense I like the strategic aspects of it and the strategic part that's highlighted the most is through how people socialize and some people purposely socialize and others just naturally socialize and I like to see those players uh, at work and I've never truly been one to want to complain about nonsense of, like you know you know whose sexuality is what or what race is in there or not I mean again that's a liberal thing to care about all of that it's a very Jim Crow segregation is a bigoted mindset to have but again they see it as a virtue for themselves but yeah looking at the cast Elisa is the most attractive Azai is the most desired for the fan base to be the top player uh, Brent 
I can see everybody calling him a douche all the time because, again, he's uh, uh, presumably straight white male. Brittany is the body positivity. Christy is the hair positivity because I don't think we ever had a bald female on this show before. Uh, Derek F. Seems to be uh, seems to be like the intellect. Uh, Derek X. You know the Asian. Stop Asian eight insert again. Should be more Asians cast. We're going by percentages. Uh, Frenchy. He will be the presumed MAGA Trump supporter. Christian will be the white liberal ally, and I'm sure a lot of the swirlers, even though they're so pro-black, <laughs> a lot of the swirlers. They're going to want him to be in a showman's with Azai, with, uh, with Azai, per, uh, preferably. You know, you know, Hannah and Tiffany are there, but, you know, they engage into this, uh, colorism thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's nonsense. Like, they have a lot of, you know, self-hating and other people-hating issues. So, based on the colorism thing, they will prefer the dark-skinned chick to get the white ally in Christian you know and again I'm presuming based on his picture that's what he's going to be you have Hannah who looks to be the Kaepernick of the cast you know, the mixed race <laughs> uh, Kylan you know all around type guy you know I can see him maybe getting along with Whitney and they will hate him for it online <laughs> Sarah you know, slightly body positivity, a little bit lighter than Brittany. You know, cute little cheeks. But I can also see her being a BLMer. Yeah, Sarah and Brittany will be the BLMers. I can see that because there's a lot of fat white chicks that like to uh, hover around that. You know, since they're low grade in their own community, they get uplifted when they come over to the <laughs> POC BLMers. Again, the fact that people use this term POC, like you're calling people colored. Colored people, you're reusing that. But again, that's their logic. Tiffany, I can see her uh, being the attitude that they want. And they will love her for it. Because what she lacks in uh, the darker melanin that Az Azai has, she makes up for maybe in the attitude department. And again, this is how these people think. This is how these people think. When you're around it, you you know, and it's pretty pathetic. Uh, Travis <clears throat> easily could be another one of the uh, main targets. So it's really going to be interesting to see how these uh, white guys enter this house. Because if they play into, and this would be beautiful gameplay. And would make for a great villain, at least in the liberals' minds. If one of these white guys in Brent, Frenchie, and Tr Travis, or Christian go in here and purposely play <laughs> to this whole woke nonsense, and then tear it from the inside out and become the top dog in that alliance, and then just align with his, uh, one of his white bros and take it to the final two, I I would find that comical because then they would be so pissed online. Uh, Whitney, you know, Whitney could be uh, the most hated house guest, especially if she's able to swoop up an Xavier or a Kylan to be on her side, you know, via desiring her. They would really hate her. Xavier, Kylan, they're supposed to be with Desire. <laughs> Castle them. They're coons. And last but not least, Xavier. I'm sure right now, right now, is between Xavier and Colin, who's the most desired by the Big Brother fan base. But if the feeds open up and either one of them is buddy buddy, too close with Whitney or Elisa. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of woke racism, bigotry, and just all around mental issues going on online with people spurging out about 
Why do you think they went outside? She's a queen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope CBS, with this diversity casting uh, quota, I hope they get every single thing that they were asking for. Because believe it or not, this has the potential to be more problematic, as they like to say. This has the potential to be more problematic than Big Brother 15. And I'm not just, I'm not necessarily talking about problematic in the house. I'm talking about online, on Twitter. Because the biggest bigots of every season of Big Brother since I've been watching the feeds, starting with 15, the biggest bigots have been the woke, the so-called tolerant, the so-called anti-racist Big Brother fans online, on Twitter. Because again, they're still going after people who are out of the house. So much so that these people still have to limit their Instagram comments. Like, how fucking pathetic is that? Still searching up Aaron from 15? Even though she's done with Big Brother and hasn't mentioned it? Doesn't talk about it? Can't leave people alone? Again, these are the social terrorists these woke people are. These liberal people are. So it's going to be interesting to see who their new enemy is going to be. Because 100% guarantee they will target a person in this house to be their enemy. The person that they're constantly going after inside and even outside of the house. But here is your big brother 23... 50% quota Big Brother cast. I'm just looking forward to seeing how alarmingly bigoted the woke crowd on Twitter will be online as they are every single season. But it's going to be extra this season because they feel obligated to it. It's part of their DNA, I guess. <laughs> 